Hello, this is going to be a quick video, hopefully quick. Um, my videos do have a habit of rambling on, so apologies if it does. But it's about people who already play modern jazz guitar and they want to get into early jazz guitar or earlier like swing. I'm really thinking of the 1940s, late 1930s, 1940s here. So we've got the electric guitar, we have Charlie Christian, um, but uh, we are not yet in the bebop era. So the style is different and the feel of the music is still based on dance music and uh, bands such as the Basie Orchestra, Benny Goodman Band and so on are the predominating um, sound of, of, of this music. So, um, I, I've brought a guitar, or I'm filming a guitar today, which is deliberately quite ahistorical because I think this is the kind of guitar which a lot of modern jazz guitarists might have access to. Now, this guitar is a good choice over, say, I think a 335 or a Telecaster although those will do in a pinch if you have them, because of the look. It looks like a jazz guitar. It's got F-holes. Um, somebody who knows their history will look at it and go, well, actually, um, I think you'll find that they didn't have two pickup guitars or cutaways in 1950, sorry, 1938, and they certainly didn't. But um, this is enough of, uh, this is similar enough that people are not going to throw things at you, I think. And um, uh, the look is kind of important for this music. Um, because it's mostly about nostalgia and recreating the past. Well, it's not even nostalgia, because nostalgia implies you have to remember something the first time around. It's about retroness, isn't it? Vintage, that kind of thing. So having a guitar which looks vintage is kind of important. If you haven't got one of these, use an acoustic guitar. Okay? Uh, that's my first bit of advice. Um, now, um, in terms of playing, in terms of... Uh, you know, playing this kind of style. I will really want to avoid getting too much into note choices. I'll make some pointers later on, but I feel like the two big things um, about this is, first of all, you don't want to be um, making conscious decisions about your playing. That's awful. That, 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 whenever I have to do that, I always play really badly. Improvisation is based around the moment and your feeling and your spirit within the moment. So I want to concentrate on things that will make an intuitive difference, right, to your playing. Um, rather than sort of saying, well, you can't play this note on that chord, that's not in the style. So I'm not going to say anything, um, I'm not going to ban any note choices, let me put it that way. Okay. Um, by the way, this is the uh, journey I followed. I started off as a modern player and went into swing, um, and I was sort of kind of consciously managing my playing for quite a few years, and I actually think um, it was quite a bad idea. I think I was, it was almost like I was practicing on the bandstand a lot of the time, and now I just don't care, and I think I play a lot better. Anyway, um, so what am I talking about with that? Well, let me just give you an example. I'm going to play some note choices that are absolutely fine for swing. So I'm going to play, uh, let's see. It's so quite fun in low choices. I threw in a couple of tritone subs and a bit of a flat sharp level on that chord, you know, just to show that you can do that. Um, I mean. Like this, for example. I think I was being more modern language. A lot of what I was playing was kind of somewhere in between swing and bebop. Um, sort of eighth note slide, eighth note lines with chromatics and so on, um, describing the changes. Pretty old school, but he, uh, that that last phrase is kind of more is more an example of what I might play in a more contemporary vein. Um, now. I hope you agree. You might not agree. You might think this still sounds very old-fashioned, but my, my way of playing is kind of old-fashioned. But what I was doing was I was kind of deliberately taking the amp and having it set quite high so that I can play very much off the amp and play very legato. So, for example, if I'm practicing a scale, I might practice it. I'll turn down the tone a little bit more, maybe. more of a contemporary sound to me, okay? So I'm assuming that most people have come out of that tradition. And I would say that the history of the jazz guitar, um, you can talk about 
you can talk about things like um, harmony and the role of the instrument, the ensemble, but I think you can express the history of jazz guitar very simply as the touch has got lighter. So in the early days, you were playing acoustic guitars, very often just playing rhythm in big bands and having to hammer the living bejesus out of your instrument in order to be heard. Um, it's just about possible to be audible within things like string bands or Django. So, you know, you play single note lines maybe, but most, most soloists in those era, in that era, the 1930s, were... <laughs> basically like banjo players but quieter okay <laughs> so I mean that is that's the tradition of Alan Royce and Dick McDonough and then Carl Press and all those great players um, and I'm not knocking it it's a great thing but it's kind of different um, and he had to whack the strings hard and want to be heard then we had the invention of the electric guitar or the popularization at least of the electric guitar via um, Charlie Christian a touch got lighter but Charlie and the players who are immediately around him such as George Barnes and Barney Kessel and so on are still hitting the strings quite hard you know still like <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was really loud. It's kind of bat, bat, bat. It's kind of a full on sound, right? Then later on, it got lighter with Wes Montgomery and his thumbs. Like one thumb. And obviously, that wouldn't really project acoustically. And then the players that followed on, you know, like Pat Matheny and so on. Um, uh, you know, intended to have a lighter touch and now contemporary jazz guitar we're mostly looking at players who do things like alternate pick and really try to get it even. Now, right, if I sort of turn the volume down on that. You can hear that even though I'm playing sort of kind of quite traditional jazz lines the, um, the, the sound is not projecting much at all on the guitar, whereas if I play with down straights, I get at least twice the volume. So the first thing I would say as a result is modify your touch. Turn the guitar lower, or turn the amp lower, so that it's not supporting your playing as much, and don't worry about getting, you know, don't worry about getting even, um, but play everything with down strokes, which will give you enough evenness. So, you know, it's kind of, and if you've got a triplet, we do have triplets in swing music, make sure you hammer on and pull off, you can do rakes as well. I think if you start doing that, then you'll get much more going to the start. So it's really the difference between maybe something like this. Very graceful kind of legato sound and this. Okay, so it's just a different quality in the sound now. So then when I play these sorts of lines like this. play all down strokes on eighth note lines, especially at the tempo, which leads me on to the next thing, which is the feel. So, as you'll notice, all my lines are constructed on sort of lines of rolling eighth notes, which I think is quite a, quite a modern jazz thing to do. is, uh, you know, eighth notes, but if I sort of start playing more with rhythm, you know, uh, and thinking about playing quarter notes and syncopations, then you get a different kind of effect. So I'm going to do... Um Let's try that again without a mistake. Sounds 
only good if you make loads of mistakes. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea, hopefully. It's down strokes and um, just kind of keeping it. Not even on playing eight um, quarter notes, even at upper tempos, like I sort of do a fast rhythm change. This one. that you know it's just kind of much simpler it's less there's less kind of um, eighth notes there basically and you know it's like you go just triads and sixth note uh, well it's a major sixth arpeggio I'm playing on there and there's enough in the rhythm just to give it a bit of a bit of shape and it starts to sound like well swing music okay so that's important um, and also don't, you know, at slow tempos don't neglect the triplets as well, I like play like in a, in a mellow tone. You'll notice I'm mean, using a seventh chord there, it's a major seventh, it's really not a problem. Um, let me see if I can do a sort of intervallic thing. But you can hear that because of the way I'm playing it, it doesn't jump out too much. And you could use little bursts of that in your playing, like even if I played like an altered scale. I mean, the altered scale is kind of not really something which exists in swing music, but if I play like 2 5 1, that'd be something like this. I don't think everyone's going to moan about that, you know, it's like. Oh, man, that's, that's awful. Let me try that again. That kind of thing, you know. It's, passes barely without a remark. People might go, oh, that's an interesting note choice, but they're not going to go, you know, take him out of the back and burn him at the stake for playing an altered scale over, you know, 2-5-1. If that's your standard note choice, that's great. You know, it doesn't matter too much. Um, but on the whole, keep it simple. Um, so I kind of like that because I think this, like, just by adopting those two things, then it will drive your playing in a certain direction and you will sound more stylistic, even if you don't really change your note choices that much. The other bonus is you'll be able to do that on an acoustic guitar. Somebody calls an up-tempo on acoustic guitar. Nice stamping. There you can just play simple, right? So that is a, that's a quick win, I think, and that help a lot. Um, a few points on chords. This is very important because people will look at you funny if you do this. Um, default choices for major chords are major sixth and major triad. Don't play major seventh. So, for example, if I'm playing two five one, that sounds wrong, right? It has to be major sixth. At a push, you can go major seventh, major sixth. That's quite nice. A riff you hear a lot. Um, so if you get a seventh resolved to a sixth, same with the minor seventh actually. And notice that if we use these George Bennett's voicings, a uh, minor seventh chord going to a minor sixth is basically the same thing as playing a two five anyway. Like T for two, right? That's cool. Um, you'll notice that I'm hitting the strings quite hard. In fact, I would say what I said for single note playing is even more so for rhythm guitar, you should really have the, the volume down low and be striking the strings, not forcefully, but with a kind of... That kind of... It should be a legato flow to it, but at the same time you're powering a lot of energy into the strings, um, as uh, I have a lesson on that that you can watch. Right, finally, note choices. The only things I would say about note choices is don't be afraid of the blues, um, and in 
swing, as I've mentioned in another video, um, as well as bebop, we tend to use the major blues, which is this scale. So in the B-flat rhythm changes, or blues, we'll play this note, which is B-flat, uh, B-flat sixth chord, and we go. We play the Sir Duke scale, as I like to think of it, which is, um, you know, a G minor pentatonic with a flat five, or G minor blues scale, or a B-flat major pentatonic with an extra flat three in it. Now, swing music is very common to have the uh, flat three instead of a three. So um, if I play like Honeysuckle Rose. You'll often hear this instead. That, that's with the major third. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll play that again so it's a bit clearer. So it's the same melody but with the third lowered to a, to a flat three for the bluesy effect. So all that kind of stuff is very cool. You know, you can use your, um, uh, you know, Charlie, uh, what I'm talking about, Chuck Berry licks. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Charlie, yeah, Chuck Berry got them from Charlie Christian, in fact. Um, so it's a little tip that I had to do to uh, Chuck Berry, who died last week. Anyway, um, you know, he was coming out of the swing tradition as rock and roll was, because swing was the popular music that preceded rock and roll. Okay, so that is... Oh yeah, apart from one little thing, this is a bit of a nerdy thing, but I kind of like it. Um, don't flatten the ninth on a 6-7 chord. I, I do this all the time. I play the flat 9 on there all the time as I like the sound. But if you really want to sound swing, actually, if I play uh, this kind of thing... That's kind of more bebop. If I play um, this, that's more swing. Why? Well, because, apart from the way I was phrasing it, because we're using the major ninth on the B flat seven chord in this D flat one turnaround, right? It's a sixth chord here, put it in C major, make it easier. A7, over the top of the A7, we play. C, so the C, C flat. Um, we do this with, uh, we can use a, depending how you look at it, a E minor sixth arpeggio or a C sharp half diminished arpeggio, and it sounds like this. So I do it in the context. Sounds much more swing than this. <laughs> yeah, that's this. And, and I think that's just a stylistic trait of Charlie Parker's playing, which just got picked up on all the players that played afterwards. Thing is, I do that in a swing context all the time, and I love it. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, turnarounds in swing music are often based around diminished chords. So instead of playing this all the time, get this, the diminished seventh chord on the flat three, two, five, one, and also going up and down like this. Two fives on the whole are a lot rarer in swing music, so be aware of that. Um, and try and find, you know, if you get into this, you'll probably want to find ways of playing through diminished chords a lot more. Um, anyway, I think that's all. That's enough information, but uh, if you have the swing gig next Wednesday, then hopefully this is something which will help you um, get through it. Concentrate on touch, feel, make, the, make your touch harder, stronger. Stronger is probably better, firmer, you know, more downstrokes. And make your feel simpler, make it more dancey. Don't be afraid of riffs, don't be afraid of the blues, don't be afraid of the blues even. And definitely be afraid of major seventh chords. And minor seventh chords should be used with caution as well. Anyway, I uh, hope that's some help. Thanks for watching. Bye.